hard, you would say more effort on Ramadan. If you were to think about it with your uncle, you'd say at least equal effort. At least equal effort. But no. All of our effort is on Ramadan. Less effort is on Qubudiyah. Yes, ideally a person could have both. That's what we call Nurun al Nur. There's a term for Punjabi and I can't remember it right now. <laughs> but the English translation of the Punjabi is gold plated gold. I don't know if anybody can tell. Sonifar Sahaga. Huh? Sonifar? Sahaga. Sonifar Sahaga. Sonifar means gold plated gold. So for the English people, imagine 24 carat, if I said you in English, <laughs> 24 karat gold plated, 24 karat gold. The <laughs> nur and al nur. A person can have both. But the tragedy is that we are seeking Kamaliya. So I'm going to give you some examples from the Deen of Islam and what Kamaliya is and what Ubuliya is. And you will see this in Quran of Let's take number one. Number one example for us to learn from them, Ibrah, uh, as a lesson for who is Kamal is Iblis Shaitan. Oh, he's very Kamal, very capable, very dynamic, very proficient, skilled at Ibadah, deeply skilled at Ibadah, excellent A plus in Ibadah, first. Kamal, <laughs> very Kamal. He was a jinn, he was a jinn, but because he was such a kabil jinn, Allah SWT let him hang out, you can say like that, granted him the assembly with the angels. Can you imagine being that kabil? <laughs> that you get to spend all your time with the angels, that was his kabil Such a level of skill, right? But. What did that Kabbalah get him? Hmm? Hmm? He's a fascinating creature, Shaitan. Iblis is that creature who looked, Allah, looked at Allah Subhanahu wa heard Allah Subhanahu wa say first to do, and disobeyed Allah Subhanahu wa directly. We can't even think like that. <laughs> Meaning we disobey Allah. But if we heard in our ear Kalamullah from Allah, get up for Fajr, I think we'd all get up. <laughs> if we heard it from Allah, right? He heard Kalamullah from Al Mutakalam, he heard Allah SWT say, Faz Dudu, make Sajda to say an Adma Islam. And he right there didn't do it. Oh, but can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's pure evil. He's not kafir in the atheist sense, he's not an atheist. <laughs> He's not an atheist. He's still not an atheist. He will never be an atheist. He has yaqeen, absolute yaqeen in Allah. He talks to Allah. It's in the Quran, he starts talking to Allah. He says, I am better than him. You made me from the elements of fire and you made him from the elements of the earth. How oh, can he talk back directly to Allah? They say, no, no, but them easy. Yeah, but them easy. If he's talking back to Allah SWT, and that was part of his kamaliya. <laughs> this was his ability, his intellectual ability was making him think like that. That I'm better, he's worse, I don't need to do such that. Kamal. And what was shaitan was a PhD. You can call him Dr. Iblis if you want. <laughs> That's the level of kamaliya he had. <laughs> and nobody can say I'm picking on anyone because I'm doing it myself, right? <laughs> you call him Dr. Iblis. That's the level of kamaliya he had. So Dr. Iblis, <coughs> <coughs> it did not benefit him in the end. It didn't benefit him. He ended up becoming, what's the opposite of being makbul? He became mardud. Mardud, mar'oon. He became repudiated, rejected, refused, outcast, accursed from the Muslim <coughs> What does mar'oon mean, by the way? Latinat in Arabic. When they translate the English, they translate as curse, right? And when our youth read that word, they don't understand because they think, how could Allah SWT talk curse? Because cursing profanity is a vulgar thing to do. It doesn't mean curse the way. The Javans and mean you ask the the way people out there curse people. No. Curse means this word la'nat, when it's mansu, when it is related to Allah, when the verb is to do la'nat, and the subject of that verb is Allah. 
it means to place outside the mercy of Allah. That's what Allah means. Allah Ta'ala picks shaitan up and put him outside of the reach of his mercy. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's mercy is infinitely vast. There is no power any creation has to put themselves outside his mercy. Only Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala can pick you up bu'an an rahmatihi and take you out of his mercy. That's what happened to shaitan. Picked up by Allah and put outside the mercy of Allah. Forever. Forever. And so Mardu, and he knows it. By the way, Shaitan has absolute yaqeen that he is going to be in Jahannam forever. And people out there. It has no effect on him. An amazing creature this one. That the level so kabul, that's the biggest extreme you can get. So kabul, but zero makbul, <laughs> hundred in kabuliyah, and zero in kubuliyah. And Allah Taala shared all of that information with us in Quran, so we could understand. He shared the words Shaitan said, showed us that dialogue, showed us the whole story for us to learn something. But the more important thing than being kabul is to become makbul. And this is why Hazrat uh, Shaykh Mala Ashraf al Prangari Mullahu Ta'ala used to say that Iblis Shaitan was an Abid, he was a worshipper of Allah. He was an Alim, he was a scholar. He was an Arif, an Arif, he understood Allah. That's why he asked for Mukhla, right? He asked for a, um, a stay. He said, Don't punish me right now, let me stay until the end of time. He was an Arif, he understood that Allah will grant me this request. But he wasn't an Ashik. He was an Urdu Mir from Mateh, but at least Abid Ta, Alim Ta, Arif Ta, but an Ashik Nita. Don't worry, if I say anything in Urdu, I will always say it in English either before or after. No need to worry. Hmm. All right? Uh, an Ashik. Didn't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. Actually, if you ask me, didn't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Did not love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. And that's why in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes who the Allah Amanu are. So they are the zero percent of shaitan in them. Allah Ta'ala says, Walladina Amanu Ashaddu Humbanillah. But the people of Iman, they're extremely extreme in that one quality shaitan never even had a drop. <laughs> They're extremely extreme in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah dina amanu are. And that's why shaitan won't be able to have an effect on them. If they're properly Allah dina amanu. You know, this is the reason why the people of the soul talk about love for Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran said, Ashaddu hubba lillah. Extremely intense love for Allah. Means it's hard to It's ishq. Ishq ilahi is ayni Qur'an, ayni Islam, ayni deen. To have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was the first example we gave. And that was of shaitan. Second example, right? Is Fir'aun. But nothing will show you of shaitan, at least. He had all these master sins in him. Kibber and Hasad, the two master sins. Actually, it was a particular type of Kibber that's Ujjud. Hazrat Ashraf Ali Tanat has also opened this up. He says the last internal sin to leave a person is Ujjud. What does Ujjud mean? Kibber means to be arrogant. Kibber means to view yourself as better than others. Takambur means to have Kibber, to view yourself as better than others and to treat somebody in a lowly way because you view yourself better than them. So to cut somebody in line because you think you deserve to go first, right? To perform an act of humor. And ujjab means, and nothing to do with others, ujjab means to be fond of yourself. In English we call vanity, conceit, loving thyself. That's what Iblis said. He actually did that with love for So what did he love? He loved himself. Iblis loved his own self. What did he love? He loved his Qabiliyyah. That's what he loved. He loved his Qabiliyyah. 
And that's exactly what me and you are like. We love our English. We love our ability. We love how good drivers we are. Hmm? The young man who can drive, well, he loves it. He loves it about himself. He loves it. That's Iblis. To love one's Qabiliyah. Listen to what I'm saying. To love one's own Qabiliyah. That's what Iblis has. The deen of Islam, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallam taught us, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi teaching us in Quran, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> The first line in Fatih Allah Ta'ala finishes. Finish this love of yourself. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> All praise belongs to Allah. The ulama know al Islam can be for jinns or istiqlal, which doesn't mean first meaning can be praise itself is proper only to Allah. Praise itself, Haman al Khud said of Allah Ta'ala Kusati. Praise itself befits Allah. And it also means, simultaneously, it also means every single drop of praise. All praises only are befitting to Allah. Who are you to self-praise yourself? Allah is doing tarbiyat in Quran. In the first line, he's taking out Ujjah. But we don't know that we have a study Quran from Bashaik. Your car can't teach you that this is the meaning of Alhamdulillah, taking out Ujjah. Yutukyan doesn't come in Tajweed. It doesn't come in Tafsir unless it's Tafsir from some Tasawr tradition. It's not going to come in Tafsir. You look it up, most Tafsirs aren't going to tell you. Purpose of Alhamdulillah to take out Ujjah. Take it out. So now we have a different understanding. That Kabbaliya means to be in love with one's good qualities. And that's a satanic attribute. Be very careful. Ulama have it too. Kitchens are protested by Arun's birthday. Very early Bojal, you see it. <laughs> this I don't need to translate any much. This is just for the people who... Uh, this is for specific uh, group of people so they understand. Kabbaliya, and to love one's Kabbaliya. I recite the Quran so well. You recite it well for the sake of Allah. All praises to Allah. Praise belongs to Allah that He gave me this gift. I'm so lucky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so many people use their tongue for all types of things in this world. You put my tongue in front of this Quran. Allah Akbar Kabira. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how the Muslims used to think. They used to live Alhamdulillah. It was the feeling in their heart they would see any Kabbaliyah in themselves, they wouldn't attribute it to themselves, they would attribute it to Allah. That's the way they really were. It wasn't just words on the tongue, it wasn't tarjima in the mind, it was the feeling of Qur'an, they felt Alhamdulillah in their heart. Kabbaliyah. Second example, Fir'aun. Example of Qur'an. Fir'aun, extremely common. <laughs> Extremely capable ruler, strong ruler. He is 10,000 Qadhafis and Mubarak combined. Yes, I'm not kidding you, I'm not saying it to be funny. He's so strong. Look what a strong ruler he is. He gets a dream hmm? that he's going to be overthrown by who? By some boy who's going to be born from the Bani Israel. So what does he decide? And what does he order? And he passes as a law. Every single male baby that will be born to every single woman of the Bani Israel will be slaughtered. And the Bani Israel could not even protest. There was no protest. There was no demonstration. That's how strong his rule was. So strong. No one man from Bani Israel could even raise his voice when his own soldiers would come and take the baby away. No protest, no demonstration, peaceful or otherwise, no possibility even. Such a strong grip he had on his society. Come. Come. They've not bothered in a way, but come. That's a capable, that's a capability to exercise such a strong control over such a large number of people, you have to be a capable person to do that. Extremely capable.
unspeakable. That's why here you have to say, Ananda Bhakuma Atma. That's why you have to say it. Meaning you have to say that I am your Rab. I am your Rab. I am your Atma. Not even just that. I am your Atma Rab. I am your exalted Lord. Oh, come on. Remember, and he loved this about himself. Same thing. Same thing that he said. He loved this Dhammaniya. He loved it. That's why he didn't want anything to take him off. He didn't want the child to grow. He didn't want to lose his room. He was in love with himself. Just like many of us, we love just like not so in other places. Some of us begin positions in the dunya and we love it. Never want to lose it. That's like that's the problem. He doesn't want to lose his job as king. <laughs> we are not that often. We don't want to lose our job. Because we love that position. We love that status. We love that name place. We love it. We love it. Dr. Fra'om, being so attached to Kabbaliya, <coughs> so common. He said, and it comes in Quran, Manada Fra'om of the Qomi, and Fra'om called out to his community, Kala Yokomi, Alaysali Mulku Misra. That, oh my people, don't you see, I have the sovereignty, the ownership, the property of all of Misr. Well, how does Aha, in these rivers they flow, that doesn't even they, they flow underneath me. Same word that Allah Ta'ala used in Quran to describe Jannah. Exact same words for all is using. And Allah was mentioning in Quran, exact same thing. Exact same thing. No. <coughs> so, what happened? Allah SWT said, Sayyidina Musa A.S. Now let's look at this other side, Sayyidina Musa A.S. So we make it very something else. What is Sayyidina Musa A.S.? He is not Qabil. First of all, he comes from Bani Israel, right? So that's the lower segment of society in his time, right? That was the lower class, such a lower class people that they could all be killed. Second, he is raised as an orphan. He is raised as an orphan. As an abandoned child, this is his history. We know that Allah Spanta inspired his mother to abandon him. But in the Zahir, apparently, he's an orphan. He's an abandoned child. Some of the books of Tafsir mention this incident because he makes the one around that he asked Allah Spanta to take out the knot from his tongue. And this is an incident that Fir'aun made him, due to some trick of Fir'aun, you can put it that way, or some test of Fir'aun. Baby Musa is son, he put a hot coal on his tongue and his tongue got burnt. What does it mean? Why is he making dua in the Quran that Allah Ta'ala removed the tongue? He spoke with a slur. Then Musa is he spoke with a lisp or a slur, that's how you would explain it in English. A lisp or a slur or stutter or something. He's not fasih. His brother Harun is fasih. <laughs> right? He's not fasih. He's not eloquent. He has a not. He's not covered. He's not coming. What is he? He's Makbul. What is he? He's a Makbul. Preferred by Allah. Chosen by Allah. Beloved by Allah. So who gets the Nabuat? The one who was Kabul for all? No way. <laughs> no way. Who got the Nabuat? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Makbul. And he asked Allah SWT for help. Right? And he asked if Allah SWT to make my brother Harun, make him Alayhi Salaam, Sayyidina Harun, to make him a prophet. Allah said, okay, no problem. <laughs> but when you go to Fir'aun, it's still going to be you who does the talking. <laughs> Love, where up Sayyidina Musa Islam wanted that Harun, his brother, become prophet, because Sayyidina Harun Islam is the one who's more eloquent. But still, who was given the Asa, who was given the staff? Musa Islam. Who was given the miracle? Musa Alayhi Salaam. Who was told that you're going to talk to for all? Musa Alayhi Salaam. <laughs> yes, Sayyidina Harun, he can tag along and help you. <laughs> right? Right? I'll give you another example. Now I'm bringing it more recently to history. All, many of you would know this. Maybe some of the young people don't. There are two people at the time of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One is Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. 
And one is, and some say his name was Umar ibn Hisham, but I've also seen it as Umar. I'm not so sure. But this person, second person, was extremely competent. Was known to be one of the wise people in the Arabs. Such as they called him Abu Hikam, the father of all wisdom. But it meant that he has all wisdom. And he was so respected in society, and he used to mend the relations between people who used to fight in society. And Sayyidina Rasulullah made dua to Allah SWT. Allah SWT give me one of the two Umars at least. And Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab apparently is not common. Not common. Very famous story in his life that when he was Amir al Mu'mineen, when he was Khalifa, and he was leading the Muslim armies, and he, they were passing through a valley, he stopped in that valley. When he stopped, then all of the armies stopped behind him. And they were waiting, and he was stopping, and they were waiting, and he was stopped. And one Sahaba went up to him to ask him what's the reason for the stopping. And they saw he was silently, silently, a couple of tears were coming down, and he was looking very, you know, reflective. So he asked, Ya Amir Mu'mineen, what is it? He said that I'm remembering that day when I was a young man, and my father had given me some sheep to herd and to graze them in the pasture at this valley. Any matter what some name would you? Kuch dumbe ya bakre diye the is wadi mein chhane ke liye, right? And I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm saying, oh, it's amazing. One sheep was going this way, one goat was going that way. <laughs> I couldn't manage it. <laughs> And I came back and a couple of them had been lost and my father got upset with me and said, you are a good for nothing son of mine, you can't even go in a herd and graze your sheep in this valley. And now I'm standing here and I'm herding, I'm the shepherd, right? Hmm? I'm the shepherd, I'm herding the flock of the Mujahideen Islam. I'm Amir al-Mu'mineen, and what is he doing? He's standing there crying. Why? Because he's thinking this is Kubudiya. He's not thinking I'm Kabil now. He's not thinking like that. He knows what he is. <laughs> he's not thinking I'm Kabil. He's not thinking I've got newfound Kabiliya. No, not at all. What is he attributing that to? I'm standing here now as a Mukbul of Allah SWT. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me makbool, He gave me this ability. Alhamdulillahi wa ala nasara abda. It's what Sayyidina Rasulullah said, but this is the feeling that all Sahaba had. This is how they feel. And the other fellow, Abu Hikam, he is the one who becomes Abu Jahl. He becomes Abu Jahl. Guaranteed Jahannami. From the few people you can say. Hmm? Not Makbul. More Kabul. He was more Kabul than Umar ibn Khattab. But he wasn't Makbul. And it also shows you the story of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. If you make yourself Makbul, Allah will give you Kabiliyah. If you make yourself Kabul, don't think Allah is going to give you Makbuliyah for free. <laughs> Not like that. Allah SWT is that being. Sometimes He can give you dunya without earning it. Being? You're going to have to work for it. At least want it. He may give you much more than you worked for. But you have to want it, you have to have niyat, you have to have irada, you have to have talab, you have to have a desire. So this was the story, yeah? Sayyidina Umar Radhi Allah Now I'll bring you even more closer to time. In the Mughal period of India, there was a famous Mughal king by the name of Akbar. The older people have definitely heard about him. He made his own religion. His own religion. Yes. And you would think, okay, he would call it Deen Akbari. No. He called it Deen Ilahi. Allah Akbar. He made his own religion and called it, instead of religion of Akbar, he called it religion of God. Deen Ilahi. And what was one aspect of this religion? That you can do sajda, you should do sajda to him, the emperor, king. Now, in his time, and this is an age old story and still considered today, there was a certain type of alim, who is what we call in Urdu the barimullah. <laughs> it means that, 
puppet, puppet Allah, does whatever the ruler tells him to do. So there were two Alams there, there were two brothers, Abul Fazl and Fezi. Abul Fazl and Fezi. Very common, extremely common. To give you an idea of their qabiliya, their ability, their skill, they wrote the seer in Persian, Thawate al which is what we call Bainukta Tafsir. They wrote a tafsir without using any letter, without using any word that has any letter that has any dots on it. In other words, it's very, and it exists today. It exists in manuscripts today. It still exists. It's difficult enough to write the seer. Imagine how capable an alam you have to be to write the seer. And then to limit yourself to those words that don't have a ba, or a ta, or a tha, or a za, or a sheen, etc. No letter that has any nukta on it, right? Imagine how kabul you must be. How intelligent they must have been. That intelligent they wrote that tafsir. They had such a strong memory power. <coughs> That one brother, if he heard anything once, he would memorize it at just listening to what, what we call photographic memory. He just hear it once and he memorizes it entirely. The second brother, if he heard it twice, if he heard it twice, he could memorize it entirely. So what did they do? So as we say, they caused a big hue and cry. What they used to do is in that day and age, this was an age of empire. And there were certain people who were called poets. And what they would do is sometimes they would make some poetry in praise of the emperor. And they would go to the royal court and recite it to the king. And the king would get happy and he would give them some money. And this is how these people made a living. Right? Now, anytime a poet used to come to the court of the emperor Akbar, and he would say, Oh king, I made this poem in your honor and praise. And I composed it specially for you. So the king would say, Okay, you recite it. And he would recite a really wonderful poem, and the king would be getting all happy, and the person would be thinking, I'm going to get a big reward. Once he would be done reciting, one of these two brothers, Abu Fazl and Fizi, they would stand up. And he'd say, King, that's not his poem, that's my poem. That's not his poem, that's a plagiarism. <laughs> He's copied it from me. So the king would say, Okay, prove it. He says, I can, I can recite it. Remember, he heard it once. And he memorized it. So he recited it. Minu an. Exactly word for word. Then the other brother would get up and say, I can second my brother because he memorized after hearing it twice. So he got up and said, Yes, I can also testify that this is my brother's poem and I can also recite it. He recited the whole thing. So then, instead of getting some money, he would be beaten out of the court, ran out of the court. That's what these guys are doing. So calm, but look at their intelligence. They wrote that tafsir. Look at their memory. But when it came time that Mughal Emperor Akbar needed some ulama to sign off on this fatwa of his, and sign on a fatwa that he wanted them to write, that you can do sarzu to me, who other in history than Abul Fazl and Fezi are the ones who signed that fatwa? That you can make sarzu to him. All that Kabbalia down the drain. Useless. 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 Mufti should be scared. Right? All that ability and then you give one fatwa and that. Hmm? That affair is a crazy fatwa. There's no issue of you know, valid, legitimate differences of opinion. Giving sadhra to Herodah. Who stood up against this? Imam al Rabani, Bajadad al Fisami. Sheikh Ahmed Sir Hindi Rahimahullah Ta'ala Strongest person who stood up against Akbar from all of Ulama him Mujadda Al-Fisani Rahimahullah Ta'ala He stood up against him the Abu Fazl and Fezi Same thing you see whenever the shaitanic attributes they come in a package You know when you buy things they say package deal hmm? The shaitan's attributes come in a package deal if you love your Kabbaliyah, you're going to have Asad for anybody else. <laughs> it comes in a package. So these two, Abu Fazl and Fezi, the Hasad means envy. Deep envy and jealousy, ghil, malice, spite, hatred, bogus. That's what they felt for Imam al Bayan So they were just plotting and conceiving how we can do something to Imam al 
And Mughal Emperor Akbar also was very upset that this was the one person hmm, who was standing up so strong against my new thing. So they made a decision. And they said, okay, well, they told the emperor, you should call Imam al Bani to you. Because although he doesn't like you, his view is that he doesn't meet with the ruler at all. But his view is if the ruler summons you to him, and there's nothing against Sharia in that gathering, that as a citizen you have to go, no matter how much you dislike the ruler, just to respond to his invitation and see what he has to say. And then you can always reject it, repudiate it, but you have to go if the ruler invites you to come. And he will definitely come if you invite him. And then what we will do is we're going to make one way to get to you in the palace, the very low cut door. It's like this. He's going to have to crawl to come to you. It will be like he's doing sazza to you when he comes in. And all, uh, and you can have all of the ministers and all of your court people sitting with you, and they can watch this, and they will all see how he crawls and comes to you. So Abu Fazl and Fili had it, Kabali had an idea, right? So just like that, they made this message. They sent the invitation, and Imam al Sallallahu felt that, okay, I have to go. Maybe he wants to talk to me. Maybe he can even make talk. Allah So when he went, when he got to the palace, and the guards were taking him, and he got close to the passage, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes he sends a special madad al nusrat It's called ilham. He inspires the heart of his special servant with something. Just like all of us in Salat al istikhara what are we asking? We're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do ilqa, to put in our heart what is best for us. So that's when you ask for the istikhara. There's some people who sometimes get it without even asking for it. Hmm? Same Allah, same ilqa, same in some. So he got ilqa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is what they're doing. And he got ilqa of what he should do. So now I will just explain to you that he went and it was about, you know, maybe this high type of door. Maybe this high, right? And so he decided to go on the door backwards. <laughs> so he went in backwards, so all of the court and all of the ministers of Emperor Mughal Akbar are seeing that what is Imam Rabbani going to show and what, how did he show his entrance <laughs> to the Mughal Akbar? Now you can understand. <laughs> he entered posterior first, let's put it that way, in a more polite way of putting it. <laughs> wow. So Kabiliya, the point was to give you the example of these two, that Kabiliya is not going to be a benefit on its own unless it's Kabuliya. Remember what I just said? Kabiliya cannot be a benefit on its own without Kabuliya. Now I show you the other side. That Kabuliya can be a benefit on its own even if you don't have Kabiliya. Being accepted and beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be a benefit even if you don't have kubuliyah. There, first let me explain two eyes from Quran so you understand what kubuliyah is. So first, you understand how important it is. Let me maybe first explain to you this way. That even if you have kubuliyah, even if you have kubuliyah, you have to be worried about kubuliyah. So who are the most Qabil members of humanity according to us? The Anbiya, right? The Prophets were the best of creation, the best of humanity. So look at Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this incident in Qur'an al-Karim. وَإِذْ يَرْحَوْا إِبْرَهِيمُ الْقَوَائِدَ That when Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was raising up al-Qawaida min al-Bayti wa Ismail. When Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam were making the Kaaba, or re-erecting the Kaaba, what did they do? What were they doing? So it's a very common act, right? What could be a more better, more noble act than to build a masjid? And the even more better and more noble act to build Baytullah. Who was the one doing it? A prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Ibrahim al Islam. Who was the one helping him do it? Another prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Ismail al Islam. Where are they doing this? In Makkah Mukarramah. <laughs> it may be the most kabil act in human history. But they're not looking at that. Whether they were after they do all of this, I said, did Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam do it on his own? No. Allah Ta'ala sent him wahi that you have to do this. <laughs> so it's not even coming from his own self. 
Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is sending him. What did you do this? But after he does this, what does he say? Rabbana takamal minna inna ka anta samiyun alim. This is what he's worried about. <laughs> he is a nabi. You did this. You were commanded by what? By revelation to do this. But no. <laughs> he is worried that will Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept this from me? Now you think if a Nabi is commanded by Wahi to do something and even he is worried about Qubudiyya then how much should me and you be worried about Qubudiyya? <laughs> how much should me and you be worried whether our actions are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is the ayah I recited to you in the beginning. Allah ta'ala said clearly, if you want to know who gets my Qubudiyya Allah yatakambadu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala innama indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts graces with his kubudiyya those actions that come from the muttaqin you want your salah to be accepted you have to pray the salah to the muttaqin you want your fast to be accepted you have to fast the fast of the muttaqin you want your talawah to be accepted, you have to live a life like the muttaqeen. You want your ilm to be accepted, you want your charity to be accepted. You don't think about this. Many of these people, they don't have taqwa, they give charity. And it's good to give charity, don't get me wrong, it's good to give charity. And that was part of that person's dini qabaliya, their religious skill and ability, that they gave charity. But they should think about kubuliya, did Allah Ta'ala accept this charity from me? I know the Masjid Committee accepted it. Did Allah Subhanahu Taala accept it? Again, if Sayyidina Ibrahim salam is worried that did Allah Taala accept the building of Kaaba from me, and he's a Nabi, <laughs> so you don't think you have to worry whether Allah Taala accepts the charity from you? So without being with the king, it's not accepted. That's Allah Taala saying in Quran. I'm not saying. Allah SWT is saying in Quran, إِنَّمَ اللَّهَ يَتَكُمْبَلُوا مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ بِشَكْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala تَقْوَى وَالَوْ سَيْعَمَانْ قُبُولْ كَرْتَهِ إِنَّمَ اللَّهَ يَتَكُمْبَلُوا مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ This is the ayah really that we need to write on our masjid and we should think about whenever we pray and we should think about whenever we do something this is the figure that we should have. The Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is training us. You see, when Allah SWT has not told us everything about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam Quran, there's selected pieces of his life. Because those are the pieces of his life that are enough hidayah for us as Ummah al Muslimah. This piece of his life we needed to know about, that we have to be worried about our kubuliyya. So we can't pass, as you were saying, so we were saying that you can't pass to some merit. People say it should be merit-based. Hmm? They say it should be a merit-based system. Merit-based. The job application should be merit-based. The university admission should be merit-based. Allah Ta'ala is saying, <laughs> admission to Jannah is not merit-based. It's taqwa-based. Admission to Jannah is taqwa-based. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atkaakum That the ones of you who are the most honored you have the most karam, you have in Allah SWT. eyes, you are honored and respected by Allah SWT, is the one who has the most taqwa. It's not amount based, it's not if the masjid chooses to publish the list of donors as your name on the top or the middle or the bottom, it's nothing to do with that. So which one gave with the most taqwa? Whose heart had the most taqwa? Who after he gave, prayed extra nafil every night, Allah SWT, accept that charity from me. That person's charity will put barakah in a masjid and make it produce people of taqwa. It will produce legions of musallim muttaqin. Taqwa, taqwa. This is what Allah SWT is saying in Quran. And this is why the Sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim was specifically stressed by Sayyidina Rasulullah. Allah is stressed by Allah SWT in Quran. This is the middle of the Ibrahim. This is part of the millat. Millat isn't just the rites of hajj. Millat is this worry for kubuliyya. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, فَاتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةِ إِبْرَهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مُنَا مُشْفِقِينَ That you should follow the way and the mizaj. Hmm? Millat means the mizaj, tarz, andaz, the way, the manners and the outlook, the feelings of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. I'll give you another example of Kabulia. Sayyidatana Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. One of the greatest women in the history of the universe. And of course, the one who is one of the four greatest women. Such a great woman, we can't even imagine. Such a woman, the way she is described in the Quran. Amazing woman. Amazing woman. So, how was she born? Her beginning is Kabulia. Why? Because her mother, her mother, who is the wife of Sayyidina Imran al Islam, when she is pregnant with baby Maryam, not even baby yet, just but the unborn baby Maryam, she makes dua to Allah. Allah Ta'ala has that dua from Irkal Imrat Imran. That when the wife of Sayyidina Imran al Islam said, Rabbi inni nazartu laka ma fi batni, that oh my Rabb, I pledge to you already, even before my baby is born, this is what the mother should be thinking. This is the figure that a mother is supposed to have for the kubuliya of her child. Not like today, the woman gets pregnant for the third time and her parents are telling her, how are you going to afford the education fees? How are you going to educate the child? They're worried about kabuliya. They're crazy. They've taken kabuliya to that level of extreme. They're thinking about it when the kid is in the belly. Look at what Quran is teaching us. You should have been taking kubuliya to the extreme and you should have been worried about kubuliya when your baby was in the belly. And if you have a mother who worries like that, the daughter goes on to be like, saying that in a Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. Just her name, you can just feel it. If you're a mu'min, you can feel it in her name. That purity, that chastity, just a haya or pakdamani. Just say the word Maryam and you feel, you feel the haya of pakdamani dripping from her. She was pure haya, nur of haya, manawar bin nur al haya, dripping haya. She had a mother like that. <laughs> she had a mother who was worried about kubuliya of her children, not worried about kabuliya. This is the word that she's supposed to have. So here, nadarku laka ma fi batni muhallam fa takabbal minni. Takabbal minni. What is that? Kubuliya. Even after making such a beautiful du'a, such a beautiful du'a to make for a woman, that Allah, I pledge my unborn baby to you. I pledge, may my school, I'll give hawala to you. Even after such a beautiful du'a, she's worried, but the Kabbalah means, believe, they understood the thing to be worried about. Allah Akbar. Such a beautiful woman. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran, Ya Manyam, Inna Allah istafaki. Allah subhanahu has chosen you, chosen. Same word used for saying now, so is a Mustafa. He is the male Mustafa, she is the female Mustafa. Yes. She is the female Mustafa. Allah subhanahu wa could not pick any other word to describe her. Why do women? Because the mother, one of the reasons, right, is the mother has such a word for kubuliyya. If we are mothers who are listening, and fathers also, fathers also should have the same worry for their kids. That should be the real worry. <coughs> Allah SWT will take care of the rest. You also make use of, I'm not saying don't make use of the Islam. Have that worry also. Just don't have that worry only. <laughs> worry about their Qadaniya, but also, don't worry about their Qadaniya only. If you worry about their Qadaniya also, but you're primarily worried, primarily worried about their kubuliya, inshallah they'll become that nur al nur. Inshallah. And Allah does bless this Ummah with so many people like that. So many people like that. Another example we'll give you. Sayyidina Hajar radiya ta'ala anha. Again, makbu. Makbu. She's a woman. Stranded by her husband. I mean, we could to just describe it like that for the moment, right? Sayyidina Ibrahim leaves her. He doesn't tell her why. 
The Quran doesn't tell you why, by the way. Hadith doesn't tell you why. What was that mission that Sayyidina Ibrahim Muslim went on when he left his wife? You don't need to know that. Allah Ta'ala says, we don't even tell you that. <coughs> all you need to know is that he left her because I told him to leave her. And that's all she needed to know. <laughs> that's all we need to know. Why? Because that's all she needed to know. She was fine with that. But Allah Ta'ala told you to go, Shabbat, go. <laughs> it's enough for her. So it's enough for her, it's enough for us. Now she's sitting there, right? And she has a baby. So right? has a baby. In this place, Allah Ta'ala describes it in a valley zizain. It's a valley which has no vegetation whatsoever. Barren land. And as all of you know, she climbs up to this little hill, Safa, looking for water. She can't find it. And she comes down. But when she's down, she can't see her baby anymore, so she runs in the bottom part. Right? So she can quickly go back up the next hill so she can see the baby also and look for the water. That's called Marwa. And she can't see, so she thinks, let me go back again. And this is Jukhya Tana. You know, people, when they're worried, they pace to and fro, right? That's what she's doing. That's what she's doing. And then by the seventh time, when she reaches Marwa on top, by the seventh time, seven times Allah SWT made her do this. Then baby Ismail, because he's also so hungry and needy by this time, right? And a mother, she can also not produce milk unless she has water to drink, right? So he's so hungry by this time, he starts kicking at the ground. <laughs> when he kicks at the ground, Allah Subhanahu makes this water come up. And Zam Zam is Hebrew. Zam Zam is Ibrani Zabam. It means Roko Roko. It means Bas Bas. <laughs> Zam Zam means stop, stop. So much water came out that when she saw it from Marwa, then she got worried that my baby is going to drown. Yes, that's what happened. She got worried that he's going to drown. So from Marwa, she said, Zam Zam. Stop, stop to the water. And the water stopped. The water listened to the command of that woman. Love. That's the same water me and you drink today. And she's so makabool in the love. That Allah Subhanahu made the man of this Ummah run. Walk fast, not everybody does this Sunnah, but to jog, trot, and on the seventh time it's Sunnah to run faster. Because it comes in the books that she ran very fast the seventh time. So you should do a light jog six times. Oh, meaning after that, there's this green, they made this big green flush with lights off. On the seventh time, you should sprint. You know what sprint is? Hmm? You should run fast, as fast as you can the seventh time. That's actually the sunnah. These are fine things that our ulama have taught us when we made umrah. You should sprint that seventh time. So makabool, Allah SWT said, so I'll do this first and do so you can enjoy it more. Some of you. Allah SWT said, Ya itni makabool mele bandi hai. there. <laughs> That's how Mokabul a Mahajar Imagine what Guruniya is. And she's a Ghair Nabi. Don't think this is just an Anbiya. She's not a Nabi. You can get the same Kabulia in theory as a Mahajar today. Anbiya ki Kabulia to Tukwani Masak. Ghair Nabi to Hamsaka. She's not a Nabi. She's not a Prophet. Amazing. Amazing how accepted she was. Here we can give you many, many stories. Many stories. Kubuliya Sahaba Ikram, Kubuliya Imam Nifran, Kubuliya Imam Bukharian, Kubuliya Imam Shatibiran, Kubuliya Imam Ghazairan. Bullying is too much for you, huh? <laughs>
آپ تو نہیں چل سکیں گے آئے اس تھا نا مجھ سے تین گھنٹے کے سفر کرواتے ہیں مگر بیان ایک گھنٹے سے زیادہ نہیں سن سکتے ہیں ٹیک می تھری آور ٹیک ایٹ فروم آکسفرڈ ٹو نوٹ ڈیل So I will give you then one of these stories that I mentioned. So we obviously give you the story of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. The most makbool of all of the Ghair and Biya. The greatest human being ever in history after the Anbiya. So can we put a boat in one? Okay. Okay. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq very esteemed. سینا ابو بکر صدیق بن تو امام میری سے بھی افضل ہے امام میری سے بھی افضل ہے امام میری بھی غیر نبی ہے سینا ابو بکر بھی غیر نبی ہے مقابلہ ہوا کہ انبیاء کے بعد سب سے افضل کون ہوگا سینا ابو بکر صدیق و دی اللہ تعالیٰ ہوگا that's his number greatest person after the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Someone may have thought that that's going to be Imam Mehdi. He's not a prophet, although we say alayhi salam, that's something long, that's a separate discussion, so why we say that? <laughs> he's not a prophet, he's not a prophet. He's a non-prophet, non-prophet, non-prophet. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, as-Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhu wa anhu majmai, is greater even than Imam Mehdi. So much more that you can understand so many stories and our friends from Bolton are here. We used to tell them these stories in Bolton last time. So we'll tell them a new, a new aspect of this film today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an al-Kareem. I'll just read you part of the ayah. Just these words are enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Abu Bakr Shriqa in the Qur'an. That Ilhuma and the two of them, watch my fingers, and the two of them, Huma. <laughs> this one word actually, Huma. <laughs> In Quran, this is the Makbuli to say Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. You see, the Arabic language is special. It has the singular, it has the plural. And it has the dual. Singular you can understand. That's Tawheed. It has to be there. You must have singular in language. Because it has to do Dalalat. It has to uh, create the meaning of oneness. Plural you can understand. Because there's plurality. And you need plurality con to contrast with singularity. Question arises in philosophy of language. Question arises in the philosophy. Why do you need duality? Why do you need the jewel? It's this particular type of verbal kind. You don't have it in English. You don't have it in English. You've got singular and plural in English. Two and three, there's plural. You needed the dual because Quran, Quran and Arabiya. The Quran has been revealed in Arabic. Arabic was created for Quran. There was a special meaning Allah SWT wanted to give to duality. That sometimes there are two people who have such a nisbat. In our tasawwuf we call nisbat ittihadi. They are inseparable. They are so close to one another. That they two are like one, but they are two, but they are one. But they are two, but they are one. Hey, Sunday. This is Uma. This is why Tisniya Kasiqa Hayabi Zubar Me is Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala or Sayyidina Rasulullah s.a.w. ki nisbati ittihadi ko bayan karne ke liye Allah to show that deep, undying, unflinching relationship between them so makbul, Allah ta'ala wanted to show that a person can be so makbul so makbul That's why Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hadith, he said, لَوْ كَانَ نَبِيًّا بَعْلِ لَكَانَ أُمَرْ What does this mean? The Muhaddisin said that the Prophet should have said, it means in English translation, that if there were to have been a Prophet after me, it would have been Umar. And so Muhaddisin said, but the Prophet should have said, Abu Bakr. لَوْ كَانَ نَبِيًّا بَعْلِ It means Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, بِالْفَرْضُ الْمَحَالِ He's imagining the hypothetic which is absolutely impossible. He's taking something, Khatam and Nabi, right? Christ represented it. 
Khatam al Nabi, Nabi Akram Sun is the absolute in every single sense, absolute last and final messenger and prophet. Here for a particular reason, which is Bayani Fazilat of Umar showing the greatness of Sayyidina Umar, the Prophet is willing to entertain for the fraction of a second this completely impossible thing, Lokana Nabi and Bali, that if there were to be a Prophet after me, but even though the Prophet can entertain such an impossible thing, what was absolutely impossible for the Prophet to entertain was that Abu Bakr wouldn't be with me, he would be after me. That's not possible. So if there's going to be somebody after me, it means that the person after me won't be with me. Say <laughs> something. So Sayyid Abu Bakr, no way he can not be with me, therefore there's no way he can be after me. I can even entertain, although it's impossible, hypothetically Nabi after, I can't entertain Abu Bakr after. Allah. The actually this hadith is the khalil of the Sayyid Abu Bakr Siddiq, Allah ta'ala. <coughs> this Quran, one ayah of Quran I showed you. Homa and sahibihi. Oh, one sahaba has been guaranteed. Sahib Rasul. There's one Sahaba who has been guaranteed in Quran. If any one of those others want to try to mess with us on Sahaba, the subset post Jawab Muhammad the Sayyidina Bakr Sidiq Allah can. Ye to Quran e Kareem me Allah Taala ko Sahib Rasul keh rahe hain. Aap kaun hain unko Sahaba ne mande mein? Kabooliya. And this Quran, by the way, and again the ulama can understand this better. This Quran is Azali Abadi. <laughs> This is not Sahaba, it's just in Medina. <laughs> this Huma, this exists pre-eternally in the irad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Huma, this Huma, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Shaddiq, and that's on the Sayyidina Surah, exists pre-eternally in Kalamullah, in the irad of Allah. This Huma existed on earth. This Huma is together in Medina when we are resting. And this Huma will be together in Jannah for those. <laughs> This is why Tasniya exists. So Imagine. So inseparable that even the Bayakrim Sun cannot even conceive of separation. Deen of Islam is what made Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Same deen me and you have. Same deen. Nabiim kafir is khatam ho gaya, Siddiqim kafir is khulana. The Nabiim is finished. Prophethood is finished. Siddiqin, that's still open admission. Missions are still open. <laughs> still taking applications. What is it, taqwa? In awliyahu illa muttaqoon. Awliya are also people of taqwa. Quran, Quran. In awliyahu illa muttaqoon. Then who are the awliya Allah except the people of taqwa? So this was the example of Kubuli. Now to end, I wanted to give you the message. That sometimes you can have kubuliya without kabuliya. You can have kubuliya without kabuliya. Let's look number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was choosing where to put Baytullah, there are many valleys in this world. He could have picked a beautiful valley of Switzerland or beautiful valley of Swat, hmm? Karan, hmm? or any other beautiful valley <laughs> lush, green, splendid valley no <laughs> Allah Ta'ala when he was picking valley he didn't look at Qawliya I told you earlier in Quran what does the valley describe then? Wadi ghayr zi zarin no vegetation at all Allah Ta'ala to selected that valley Makkah <laughs> Mukarram <laughs> to be place of Baytullah Baytullah itself Qabiliya means it should be made of gold and diamond and pearls. No? No, no, no. Allah's mess is training. Training is being given to us. Sha'airullah. Sha'airullah ki baat ho rahi Understand Sha'airullah. Hmm? The signs of Allah. The manifestations of Allah. The things that have nisbat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is showing those things that have nisbat with me. Look, what do you see in them? Qabiliya or Qubuliya? What do you see? What is there in the valley of Makkah? No Qabiliya. Kubuliya. What is there in Kaaba? Is it made of gold, diamond, pearl, ruby, marble? No. It's made of simple rock. 
small, but very small. But you go there with the heart of Iman, you see such Jalal and Azmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Akbar. It's the markers of the Tajaliyat, the Jalaliyat, who kills some dynasties. Hmm? If you go and you understand, you will see what I'm saying. There's more Jalal in that little rock structure than there could be in the greatest diamond palace that you could ever build. Kubudiyya, not Kabbalah. Look at the mountain of Uhud. Sadiq, Sayyidina Rasulullah said that you hit Buhu. And we love it. And it loves us. You hit Buhu when I hit Buhu. That the mountain of Uhud loves us and we love it. Go to Uhud and look at that mountain. It's not the Swiss Alps. It's not Mount Everest. It's not K2. It's completely not Kabul Mountain. Completely just uh, brown sandstone. Very short, it's like a hill. You many of you have been there, it's like a hill, even to call the mountain. But so it's not Kabul, but what is it? Makabu, Makabu. Look at Masjid Nabwe. All of you know the story. The Sayyidina Rasulullah is someone used to give the Jummah Khutbah in the beginning. He used to lean against a tree stump. Tree stump. It's not Kabul. It's not even a tree. It's not even, it's a stump. It's not even a tree, no one branch, not one leaf, not one flower, not one fruit, not egg. Dana could do it. Took it out. Koi, koi shaak ne, koi patte ne, koi phool ne, koi phal ne, koi egg dana could do it. Koi kabadiya ne. What does it have? Kubudiya. Say not for some. Leaning on it, leaning, leaning. Then Sahabi Kram, because they loved the Prophet they wanted that now the gathering has gotten more, more Muslims. <laughs> and some of our brothers, they can't see Sayyidina Rasulullah when he makes khutbah. So we make member, hmm? some steps with some elevated place for Prophet to sit. So one Sahaba, he made this, and he presented it as a gift to the Prophet, and the Prophet accepted it. So next Friday, Sayyidina Rasulullah walked up those steps, and sat on the member, right, and then stood on the member, sorry, and gave khutbah, and now all Sahaba are so happy. You can just imagine how happy they would have been that day. For them, so happy. Hmm? On one side, they're beaming with joy because they can see Sayyidina Rasulullah. Everyone in that masjid is happy except one. <laughs> Who is that one? That, that stump? Starts crying. Starts crying. Sahabi Kram, right? That he started crying so much that it felt that you but you can just sit there. Like the wailing and weeping of a child. About Sayyidina Rasulullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa Fars ibadah is going on. Khutbah of Jummah. Fars. Sayyidina Rasulullah pauses the Jummah Khutbah. Interrupts Fars. Walks down the steps of the member. Walks over to tree stump. Tabki hai. Tasalli dete. Ye rahmatul al-alameen hai. He comes and he consoles the tree stump. He pats the tree stump. He strokes the tree stump. Gets it to stop crying. Oh. You should think about this. This is kubudiyya. Did the tree stump? Could it see the prophet? Yes, it could still see the prophet. If we're going to think, if it could speak, maybe it could see. It could still hear the Prophet <coughs> How far did the Prophet go from it? Maybe a few meters. Few meters. That was enough to make it cry. Me and you are miles away from the Sunnah. And we don't cry. The tree stump is better from us. Tree stump is better than us. If we could also cry over ourselves how distant we are from the Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu then that same Sayyidina Rasulullah who walked down from Jummah to give the tree stump the salli and consoled it, that same Rasul will come to us and take judgment. Console Shifa. That's called Shifa the Rasul. Console us. Amiri Ashik. It comes in Bukhari. It comes in Bukhari. Khan Sahaba was caught drinking. This is Bab had the shurk. was caught drinking. And he kept getting caught over and over again. So the other Sahaba were upset. 
that he's hurting the Prophet and keeps getting caught and he got lashed for drinking. He got the punishment, he got the hard penalty. So when this happened, X number of times, one Sahaba cursed him. Cursed him because he was saying, curse it or you, you always hurt the heart of the you keep getting, you don't make true tawbah. So Sayyidina Rasulullah, he heard this curse. Words of Hadith in Bukhara. La inuhu. Don't you curse him. Wallahi alimtu annahu yuhibbu allaha wa rasooluh. That I know that he loves Allah and he loved the Prophet This love for Allah and this love for the Prophet will eventually bring him out. Isneet sawufmi is preserved the jannah. That's why Mashaik stress you should love Allah, love Sayyidina Rasulullah Subhanahu wa Taala wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It'll eventually take you out. Eventually take you out. So the tree stump, the knock up. Look at Sayyidina Bilal Bani Allahu Ta'ala Anhu. Hmm? Not common. <laughs> not common. Blackest of black skin. But that's not what it is. It has nothing to do. People mistake that. Islam has nothing to do with white skin or black skin. He was not common because actually written in the books that he was not handsome. Some of our Desi ulama misunderstand. It's not that he's not handsome because he's black. Being black or brown or white has nothing to do with being handsome. He actually was not handsome. I'm just saying because it was written in the books. Actually not handsome. So not come. Was a slave. Or former slave. So in terms of education or learning or all of those things that people look at today, right? From that perspective, not Kaaba. Again, I'm not saying we should apply this perspective to Sayyidina Bilal Rabbiyan, right? But from what we did like to describe as Kaabaliya, he's not Kaaba. Oh, but he's Makbul. Is he ever Makbul? Mu'adhinul Rasul. Mu'adhinul Madina. Mu'adhin al Masjid al Nabu. Makbul. Kubuliya. Kubuliya. He's beloved and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the books of early history, that after the Prophet passed away, Sayyidina Bilal and he moved, he went to Damascus. He couldn't bear living in Medina Manawar without Sayyidina Rasulullah. So he left. He couldn't do it. He couldn't live there without him. He, there are different ways of love. Different Sahaba. This is a very interesting thing, and this is a proper topic in itself. The way different Sahaba lived their early life after the Prophet passed away. What did they do? Where did they go? Right? There's a lot of delicate issues in that history, but it's something to learn from. So Sayyidina Bilal, he left, he went to Damascus. After several years passed, he got a dream. He saw Sayyidina Rasulullah, he saw him in a dream. And the Prophet asked him, Oh Bilal, you don't come visit me? Oh, this is all Kabuliya, you don't understand him. <laughs> he got a dream that, Oh Bilal, you don't visit me? Sayyidina Bilal woke up, got his stuff ready, immediately went to Medina Manawara, immediately set forth from Medina Manawara. When he got to Medina Manawara, who saw him coming when he came to Medina Manawara? Who saw him when he arrived? Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussain, the beloved grandsons of Sayyidina Hussain, the beloved grandsons of everyone in this Ummah. And they were so happy that they saw him, so they asked him, Lord, you've come, make the adhan again for someone. It's been so long since we heard that adhan. And he couldn't refuse the beloved grandsons of the Prophet So he made adhan. It's written in the book that I saw this, that when he made adhan, all of Medina came out. Because they hadn't heard that adhan. The last time they heard that adhan, Sayyidina Rasulullah was alive on this earth. Even it said the women with their properly covered, even they came out. Some of them were thinking in the faintest hope of hopes that maybe if this azan again, ye azan dambara suna ja rai, shayad azan wale bhi wapas aage. Not Bilal, azan wale mu'adhin rasool aage mu'adhin aage azan aage jis rasool ki ye mu'adhin hai, shayad kisi tarah wo wapas aage. 
They thought that maybe if this adhan and this giver of adhan is back, maybe the person for whom he gave adhan, Sayyidina Rasulullah, maybe he's also back. So they came out. <laughs> they came out. Skubuliya, skubuliya. And by the way, it's not, don't think. It's not because he had some beautiful voice, something like that. <coughs> it's not because he had the most beautiful adhan. It's not, that's not what it is. He was makbool, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So makbool, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Sayyidina Rasulullah up to, on a tour of Jannah, Sayyidina Rasulullah saw some footprints. Imagine, saw some footprints. So I asked Jibreel, that, what are these footprints? And Jibreel said that, oh, beloved messenger of Allah, these are the footprints of your Bilal, he is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala has ordered that whenever he walks on earth, the picture patter of his footsteps should fall in Jannah. <laughs> How mahboob? What does that mean? Keep them makboob. Unki kadam ki nakshi or unki kadam ki chandni ke awal jannat prati. Makboob. Sayyidina Abhay ibn Iqab radiallahu ta'ala anhu Makbu His talawat was Makbu It's in Bukhari In our Pakistan edition Bukhari Jinsani Sayyidina Abhay ibn Iqab Sayyidina Abhay ibn Iqab Told him recite Qur'an Abhay ibn Iqab looked at Sayyidina Abhay ibn Iqab And he sensed, he doesn't say anything about the Sunni Deen But he sensed that there's a different way and he said, oh, somebody could have a special way. He said, oh, somebody is telling me in some special, unique way. He's looking at me differently, the way he's telling me to recycle on differently. So he asked a question, which otherwise you would never ask. In some could, but he understood. So he said, Allahu Sammani, this is words of Hadith. Allahu Sammani, that O oh, Prophet did Allah Ta'ala take my name? Did Allah Ta'ala take my name? And say, this is a naam, Allah was <laughs> Yes, Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala took your name. Can you imagine how makabool the person is? That Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala wants to listen to them recite his kalam, mutakalam al Quran, wants to listen to that person recite his Quran. And Allah Ta'ala wants that Sayyidina Rasulullah is some Nabi. Should listen to that person reciting that one. This is Kubuliya. <laughs> it's not because Obey ibn Iqab was some. He's not the Sahaba equivalent to Kari of the Basit and the Sun. Not like that. Not at all. You won't find anywhere said that. He recited it with a heart. That's what they mean. When they say he recited it beautifully, it meant. He recited Quran from his heart, his heart. It was the heart recitation that was beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kubuliya, kubuliya. You see this. All in our deen, kubudiyya. Now I will end tonight's talk with three ayat from Qur'an al-Karim. Three ayat of Qur'an al-Karim. If we can reflect on these ayahs, learn and understand the meaning of these ayahs, and live according to these ayahs, insha'Allah ta'ala, we can also become people of kubudiyya. Because the Qur'an is the teaching that makes a person makbub. Quran contains that hidayah, that teaching, that can make a person makhluk. The first ayah is a very intense ayah of Quran. Intense ayah. Allah, Allah SWT says in Quran al-Karim, وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And those people who falsify, who neglect, who deny our ayat, our signs. It can mean our signs in this world, and some could also say it means verses of revelation. It means our signs in this world, and the Quran Karim is also a sign of Allah Subhanahu wa Those people who do that, 
sanastadrijuhum min haythu la ya'lamun Allah says that we will gradually, 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 hmm? gradually punish them min haythu la ya'lamun from ways they never even imagined from places they will never even know all of a sudden the child will talk back to them next thing without knowing the wife is upset with them before she knows that her husband is upset with her all of a sudden she had an accident next thing you know they got an illness next thing you know they had a financial crisis next thing you know their business went down they don't understand I mean, hey, do not have no they can't understand what's happening to me hmm? they don't realize that what's happening to them is because of what's been happening with them hmm? they don't realize what's happening to them is because of what they were doing Instead of making istighfar, they search, maybe somebody is doing hasad and somebody is doing this. No, no, no. 99.9999999% of the time, it's your own sins. Until you open them. That amil, even if he's alam, even if he's sheikh with coca ketta, that alam, sheikh, amil, who when you go to him tells you it's hasad, it's nazar, read this, is, la- is mistaken. He's mistaken, he doesn't know. He's not lying, he's mistaken. He's been trained, he doesn't have the real the soul of training. If you go to a doctor, an x radiologist, and you see every person who comes to the doctor and takes an x ray, he says you have a problem. You say there's no way medical science cannot accept this. <laughs> there's no way. This Anil Saab, anyone who goes to him, he says, ye masada, ye nazara, ye hasada, ye para, go para. He's mistaken. He's mistaken. He can only do for you what he knows. I'll put it that way, so I won't say his line. I'll say his little thought, maybe khatahwe. He's mistaken. He's seeing what he knows and he's just reading into things what he thinks. Actually, it's our sins. It's our sins. But the answer is taqwa. Answer is stop sin. Until you can go to that amal and remove cause number one, even in doctors, if they do a diagnosis, they say that it is an illness. The number one cause for this illness is X, right? If you have X, then they'll say that's the cause of your illness. That's it. We won't even investigate further. <laughs> so if you have sins, if you were doing anything against the commandment of Allah and anything against the sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah you have the cause for problems. You have the number one cause. So no need to look for secondary causes when you have the number one cause. The only way anyone should ever, ever, ever go to an amal is if they can look in their life and find pure taqwa. If you look in your life and find pure taqwa, zero sin, then you can think maybe there's some secondary cause. Then you are at that point zero 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 one percent Then fine, go to the person who claims they can cure that secondary cause. It means 99.9999% of you should be coming to ulama, mashai, you should be coming to our, their students, you should be coming to us. It's only point zero 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 one percent of you that should be going for that. But it's the other way around. The other way around. Ulama will understand. Islam आप इस्लाम को बदनाम करते हैं आप लोगों को गुमराह करते हैं आपको पता नहीं कि आप उस चीज को पूछा जाएगा ये सिर्फ जाए है टेल यू इट्स जाए नो कट नो इट्स ऑन दैट इट्स ऑल जाए बट इज इट द आंसर टू द प्रॉब्लम्स पीपल आर गिविंग यू दैट्स यू मिस डायग्नोस यू मिस ट्रीटिंग द पर्सन मिस ट्रीटिंग जस्ट लाइक अ डॉक्टर इफ ही गिव्स यू द रॉन्ग क्योर ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ नॉलेज दैट्स कॉल्ड नेगलिजेंस दैट्स मेल प्रैक्टिस that's negligent amount. He's not bad, it's just he's mistaken, he doesn't have enough knowledge. He's not doing it, it's not willful, deliberate negligence. But because he doesn't have the knowledge, he's guilty of negligence and malpractice. So don't do that. If you have a desire, you want to go into this line of the soul, zikr girl. 
ठीक ठाक खूब जिक्र करो किसी शेर की जगह थका कर करो जैसे आपने सबक पढ़ा था ना ऐसा जिक्र करो है मुफ्ती बनना आसान काम नहीं है आपने इसको खेल क्यों समझना है ऐसे नहीं सो द फर्स्ट आया दैट कैन लीड अस टू कुबूलियत वी शुड लीव सिन वी शुड लीव आवर सिन्स एंड वी शुड रिफ्लेक्ट इट इफ वी फाइंड अस इन दिस सिचुएशन व्हेन हे टू या ला या अम होम वी फील व्हिच इज आवर लाइफ इज वन प्रॉब्लम आफ्टर द अदर एंड यू से आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड आई सो आई गिव यू द अंडरस्टैंडिंग नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड We have to make toba, true toba, and we have to be true to our toba. True toba, sachi toba. Being true to your toba, pakki toba. Make true toba and then be true to your toba. And if you're one of the more religious ones, you will feel the decline. Let me show you how this will happen. Show you the signs of Rashi. I've explained in this ayah. You will see a gradual decline in your atma. It's not going to come all of a sudden. Gradually, you'll start praying less tafsir. Gradually, you'll start reciting less Quran. <coughs> Gradually, you'll start making shorter du'a. Gradually, you'll start skipping the root. Gradually, you'll stop doing this. If I gradually, it's going to happen. Gradually, watch for it. Look for it. Stop yourself from sliding into it. <coughs> Second ayah of Quran. <coughs> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Quran, "There's a group of judgment. There's a group of people who will come to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment, and they will think, they will think that they are people who were righteous. They will think." That they were salihin, so they will go in the procession, zomara, the people who are going towards the jannah. They'll think that. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Quran, "Wa kifuhum innahum masoolun in kuroqla, in kuroqla, in se sawal kiya jayega." इनको आगे नहीं जाने दें मुफ्ती साहब को जरा रोक लें पीर साहब को जरा रोक लें मौलाना साहब को जरा रोक लें उसकी माम साहब को जरा रोक लें इनसे सवाल किया जाएगा इनसे हिसाब लिया जाएगा इनसे पूछा जाएगा आपने अपना इस मुसल का क्या खातिर किया आपने इस तदरीस का क्या खातर किया आपने इफ्ताब की क्या खातर किया आपने पीली मुड़ी की क्या खातर किया You should be thinking like this about the day of judgment. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to stop and ask, <laughs> stop and ask me and us about every single thing that we did. Who's going to answer for those questions? Hmm? We should think like that. Any time we think of even doing a small sin, even cutting corners, hmm? we should think, think this ayah. Especially the people who are involved in the should think this ayah. How can you open it? Allah Taala will bani ke Muhammad Karman. Very powerful ayah of Quran. Literally, I can't even do it for you that strong in English. Stop them! Stop them! Stop them! They will be questioned by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
Where do they think they're going? Hmm? Where do they think they're going? Oh, Anybody of us has to hear this sentence on the Day of Judgment? Lose it. We'll lose it. Story, but we won't tell you that story tonight. I'll just mention that story to you. Some of you. Well, the mom may be able to tell you that story. The story of a sheikh, his name is Abdullah Andalusi Rimo. And maybe I'll just tell you that story and we end on the story. Sheikh Abdullah Andalusi Rimo. I found it once and I couldn't remember where I found it. I found it once in one of the early Arab books, but also as a Sheikh Ali Islam Ali. The Sheikh Ali Islam is a Karian one of the greatest Muhattathin of the 20th century. He has written it in his book, Akabar Kan Ramzan. He put it actually in the end of that book, it's not the book. Great Sheikh. To give you an idea of the Sheikh of Shibli. Shibli is considered one of the greatest early Oliya of his Ummah. The Sheikh of Shibli. So Sheikh, and he was a big muhaddith, Sheikh Abdullah al Andalus, he was a great muhaddith as well. A huh? great scholar, teacher of hadith. So one day he was traveling hmm, with his students, including Sheikh Sibla. They were going somewhere for the sake of being. And they decided to stop on the way and get some water at a particular well. On the way, however, actually what happened was, I'm going to tell you first, on the way, they passed by a church. And when they passed by a church and they saw that big cross, right? And Sheikh Abdullah Lusi Abdullah thought to himself, look at these people. They're so foolish. They believe that Isa Islam was the son of God. They're so foolish, they think that God can be incarnated, right? That and Allah SWT, God can take human form. Okay, he just thought that to himself and he kept walking. When they decided to stop for water, so when they stop for water, it, in those days when you travel, there are wells, and everybody stops at the well, right? It's a rest stop. <laughs> so there were some other people there, and there were some local women there who were drawing water from the well for their household needs, for their animals, for their washing. And there was one woman who was from the Christian community, right? And therefore she's not covering herself in the way a Muslim woman would. And she was exceedingly beautiful woman. None of the other people, Muslims, noticed, and they got ready after they drank the water to move on. And they saw Sheikh. Sheikh is sitting there. Sheikh's not moving. He's staying there. And they went up and said, Sheikh, let's continue. And he said, No. For me, the journey ends here. You all go on without me. They couldn't understand. Their Ustad, Hadith teacher, great Mahdid, great Alam. Sheikh of Sawwaf, he's telling them, you just go on. You couldn't understand. And he said, that no. I've fallen for that girl. <laughs> now I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to figure out a way to find out who she is. Allah <laughs> Akbar. Imagine Sheikh telling you that. They were stunned. They're looking at Sheikh. What in the world is our Sheikh saying? None of them even notice that girl. They don't even know who he's talking about. They're students. <laughs> Sheikh said no, and they kept trying, kept discontinued for some time. Eventually, the students came up. They kept going. They went on. The last person to stay was Shibli. He was the special student of Sheikh, and he kept trying with Sheikh. But Sheikh just sort of ordered, "Come, go, just go." Shibli. That there's something, something from Allah SWT. This is some strange matter that has befallen Shaykh from Allah SWT. I can't solve it like this right now. So I'll let me go and then I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. what can I do. So he also left. <coughs> Shaykh Abdullah Andalusi goes into the town, settled area, and asks around. That there's such and such a girl, and I saw her at the well, and did anybody know who she is? He's asking, asking, with this, and this, and that. 
resonant. He's asking, finally somebody from the town told him that that girl, she's from this family, and she lives in that home. Shut up. Knocked on the door. Says Sheikh Lisa the Likai, you can find it. You must have that book here. You have it in England for sure. Strange. Oh, he knocked on the door. The door opened the girl's father. He said that I saw your daughter at the well, and I want her hand in marriage. He said, who are you? <laughs> we don't know you. You're a stranger to us. From the way you look, you're from the other religion. You're from Islam. We are Christians. It looks very difficult. No, no, I, I can prove myself to you. Set any condition that you want. Okay, you'll have to live with us for one year. That we will get to know you. You won't be allowed to do any of your worship. You will have to join us in our worship. Fine. Do it. Sheikh the Musi. Living with that Christian family for one year. Then during the year he was given assignment. What? That these are our pigs. Remember the Christians do it, right? Here, you know we live in England. Hmm? These are our pigs. Your job is to tend to the pigsty. That's your khidmat of us. You will clean up the pigsty. You will herd the pigs. You will give the food to the pigs, etc. So now, Sheikh is herding the pigs and taking care of the pigs. Oh. Shibli comes back, searching for his Sheikh. Hmm? Oh, Jeeb, come here. Allah Ta'ala has Sheikh who has a Murid day. Yes, Allah Ta'ala has Sheikh who has a Murid day. Yes, Allah Ta'ala has Sheikh who has a Murid day. Yes, Allah Ta'ala has Sheikh who has a Murid day. Worried all the time, was non stop making dua for a shit. But he never could figure out, couldn't, couldn't. I could kiss somebody, ah, he had died, kill, kill, my lord. Could not understand, could not figure out for the life of him what in the world is going on. So he said, just go back, let me just go back and see. I can't figure it out for me, let me go back. So he went back, he tracked him down. He found Sheikh. And he saw what Sheikh was doing with the pigs. And he was stunned. So then he asked Sheikh that Sheikh, you are Hafiz of the Quran. Do you still remember the Quran? He said, No. I've forgotten the whole Quran except one ayah. I've forgotten the Quran. Except one ayah. What is that? وَمَنْ يُحِنُ اللَّهُ فَمَالَهُ مِنْ مُقَلْنُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْضُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُحِنُ اللَّهُ That that person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depraves, that person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abases, that person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgraces, there's no one, there's no one who can do their ikram, respect them. There is no honor and respect anywhere left for them in the world. That's the one ayah I remember. Even it's a part of an ayah. From the whole Quran, these are the words I remember. Shibli more Pershan. Even more words. Then he asked the Shaykh, you were hafiz of 100,000 hadith. You knew what with the snout, with the chains. 100,000 hadith. Do you still remember the hadith? He said, no, I've forgotten all the hadith. Huh, except one. Which hadith? Which hadith? <coughs> that person who changes their deen, you should kill him. Oh, but... Shibli Allah. Stunned. And he started crying. And he started crying. And he started crying, and he started making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, this is my shaykh. What in the world has happened? And he didn't know what more. And shaykh was just staring at him, almost like a zombie. Vacuum eyes. Just said this, this one ayah that I did, and just looking at him blankly. And so Shibli made so much dua, with so much crying, and then he left. He didn't understand what to do. When he went back, he started going back to where they, where they used to live. And 
on the way back, he saw Sheikh <laughs> later on in the journey. He said, Sheikh, how did you get here? And Sheikh had that nur back on his face. Hmm? So I asked him, that, how did you get here? And he said, oh, Shibli, when you came to visit me, and you made that dua, and you were crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then a thought came into my heart. Ya Allah, ye to me to murid it. Ye to me to shagir it. Aapne mujhe kaan tam kya ka diya? Hmm? This, this, this is, this is, this is, this is my student. This is my disciple. What have you done? What, what has happened to me? How I've become so mahroom? Uh, I've become so deprived and bereft of thee? And then Allah Ta'ala opened and sent to my heart what had happened. And he said, Abdullah, when you walked by that church, when you walked by that church, how dare you have that idea in your mind that you had saved yourself from that and that these people were foolish. This was just my fuzzle on you. This was just my gift and grace and karam on you. And I wanted to teach you this lesson. Allah is Allah. Allah is Allah. Sheikh make Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, I never, never, never do I ever want to think anything like that. That I am anything. I have zero kabiliya, zero kabiliya. I may be Sheikh Abdullah al Andalusi, Sheikh al Zaman, Muhaddith al Zaman. I am zero Allah. I learned my lesson. I have zero kabiliya. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it all back to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it all back to him. And then him and Shibli Sheikh and Murid went back to their area. And Sheikh became even bigger Sheikh. Even more Murid, hmm? even more students of Hadith. This is what we you should think. Kubuliya, kubuliya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us to lead a life, to seek a life, to chase after kubuliya. I mean, he saved us from taking even an atom's weight. Allah says you won't go to Jannah with a millallah, with a lullah, even an atom's weight of pride. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take out our ujub and our kibber and our pride and our kabbaliyah and make he make us just crazy, mad, obsessed about kubuliyah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله لم يتعامل إن شاء الله نحن بفور نعمل دعاء نعمل شورة ذكر في هذا الذكر من الطفاز قال له أن يريد أن يرسل سنة نظم في هذا الذكر بفور نعمل إلى هذا لا تفعل لا تفعل لا تفعل لا تفعل نعمل توبة على المسفر Tubu ila Allahi jamiya, ayyuhal mu'minu la'allakum tuflehu. You should make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, O believers, so that you may get falah, so that you may be successful. So there are many ways to make tawbah, mention it in our deen. One way to make tawbah, not the only way. One way to make tawbah, mention in Qur'an al-Kareem is jamiya, as in collective. So tonight we're going to do amal on that ayah of Qur'an and we're going to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu together. We're going to make tawbah for all this mistake in our life that we were chasing qabaliyah and now we want to make tawbah from that towards a life in which we are chasing qubuliyah. The way to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu is very simple. There are two things. Number one, from the heart with feeling to recite the words of istighfar and tawbah, to recite the words of begging Allah for forgiveness and repenting from sin and turning to Him. And second is to profess our iman again. Why? Because Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, imanakum, that you should continually renew your iman. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Qur'an, May yu'min billahi yahdi kambahu that that person who takes Iman and Allah, Allah Ta'ala will send Hidayah onto their heart. So we need more Hidayah. 
We need that Hidayah once again. We were untrue to so much of that Hidayah, so we want to pledge ourselves once again to Allah's Prophet and Imam, so that He may send that Hidayah on our heart. So inshaAllah ta'ala, I'm going to recite some words of Iman and Tawbah. Then, this is the way we make what I said was true Tawbah, right? Tonight we want to make intention absolute, completely true Tawbah. But then many times people ask that okay, we made Tawbah on that night. We bent Allah Ta'ala to forgive us on that night. The problem we have is being true to our Tawbah, staying true to our Tawbah. So for that, we need to be true to Sheikh is a tutor in Tawbah. That's it. Sheikh is three things. Nothing more and nothing less. Number one, tutor in Tawbah. Helps us to do Tawbah. Pushes us to do Tawbah. And then keeps us on our Tawbah. Second is tutor in Taqwa. Gives us teachings that guide us to the path of Taqwa and Sunnah. And third is tutor in Zikr. Teaches us some Zikr to do. And if we do it regularly, and we tell the tutor, then he gives us more zikr to do, or he improves our zikr, or he brings that zikr into our salah, shows us how to bring that zikr into our salah. So shaykh is three things, tutor in tawbah, tutor in taqwa, tutor in zikr. We offer open tutor, no conditions. We're going to tell you the zikr right now. Anybody who wants to, they can do the zikr. And anybody who wants to be tutored, they can be in touch. And that's simple. Very open. Clear, transparent, open. That is what we receive from our Messiah. And that is what we teach. Very quickly, I will tell you the zikr. Very simple. Number one, daily recitation of Quran. Tilawat al Quran, Kalamullah, Arabic, original Quran. You must have a habit of reciting Arabic Quran. Tarjuma and tafsir, you must study under an alim of Quran. This is zikr, that is ilm. Zikr of Quran is done by reading and reciting on your tongue and listening at least slightly audible so you can listen with your ear. Tilawat of Quran. If you can do one juz, one para a day, that is wonderful. Otherwise, you should do half a juz, half a para. If some of you are so new, you can't even start with that, no problem. Start with one quarter juz. Start with three ruku, start with one ruku. That day you're extremely busy, take the Musaf copy of Quran off the shelf, hold it with love, look at it with love. You don't recite it because you don't open it. You don't open it because you don't hold it. You don't hold it because you don't touch it. You don't touch it because you don't even look at it. This is our hakikat. So wherever you are, start, start. I give you the beginning and at least look at that Qur'an. Look at that copy of Qur'an. That's the first thing. Second, daily istighfar. 100 times a day make istighfar. Astaghfirullah wa rabbi min kulli dhanbi wa atubu ilayh. I beseech the forgiveness of Allah. My Rabb. Rabbi, my Rabb. Make it personal. May Allah ta'ala say, maafi maafi jo mere Rabb hai. मेरे पालने वाले हैं उस अल्लाह जिसने मुझे पाला था मैंने उस अल्लाह के नाम पर माने कि मैं तुम आपके मांगता हूँ तो मैं फील स्टिक फॉर्म मिन कुल इज़न बिन आई सेक टू फिगर्स ऑफ़ अल्लाह हु इज़ माय रब इज़ माय रब ही रेज़ड मी ही नर्श्ड मी ही गेव मी एंड आई जस्ट सुबेद हिम आई सेक अम्म अल्लाह फॉरगिवेस मिन कुल इज़न � and I make Tawbah to him. And we're going to make that Tawbah just now. Number three, hundred times a day, Durud Salawat. Comes in a date that the Prophet did is that five hundred times a day, we pick the hundred up and put it on Durud. This is called Qiyas. Allah Ta'ala Quran has commanded us to send Durud. Ya Yuhunadina Amun Salli wa Lehi wa Salli wa Tuslima. Hundred times a day recite. Allahumma Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa Mubarak wa Salli. And to recite it with feeling. What should you be feeling? I'm not translating, I'm going to tell you the feeling. Feeling when you recite the Druid is reminding myself that he is my Nabi, I am his Ummati. I'm not an ordinary person, I'm a follower of a Nabi. To remind myself of that, make that my identity. 
He is my Nabi, I am his Ummati. He is my Nabi, I am his Ummati. He is my Nabi and I am his Ummati. He was a true Nabi. It's time I started living like a true Ummati. He was a loving Nabi. It's time I started living like a loving Ummati. He was a loyal Nabi. It's time I start being a loyal Ummati. That's what we should feel, hundred times. So three things are done. Tilawat the Quran is taqfar the shaykh. Number four is called zikr e 24 hours a day, we also call buku fi qalbi in Arabic, to pause the heart on the remembrance of Allah. What does this mean? That when you're studying, working, shop, factory, office, driving, meeting people, sitting with people, you should still, deep inside, part of you should still be thinking about Allah. Allah says in Quran, رِجَالٌ لَا تُحِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That ayah is not there for tilawat, it's not there for tarjima, it's there for us to aspire to. It means that there are such people that neither trade or commerce, it means no worldly engagement, no worldly occupation can distract them from the zikr of Allah. How to do this? Every time you're about to start something, you're about to start work, you're about to start your class, in the beginning, for one minute, just think about Allah. Mutlaq. Any way you want. Think about Allah spontaneously. Then start doing what you're doing. Then in the middle, check yourself for 30 seconds. So, if your name is Imran, you can say that I'm Imran. Was I remembering Allah? He said, no. I was so busy when I'm doing, I totally forgot about Allah. I got so involved in this activity. I completely forgot Allah. What did the Quran say? That there's no activity that involves them so much that they can ever forget Allah. So just remind yourself of Allah. One second, just think of Allah again. Then go back to what you're doing. Then again, check yourself. Keep doing this throughout the day. You will find that very quickly you will become a person of the Great Kathir. You will always be thinking about Allah along with doing everything else. The so fourth thing, the fifth thing is called Raqqaba. And that we'll do now. So if Tafisam, who wants to recite, can come here. Muraqaba means silent zikr of the heart. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, alayhi <coughs> rahima, that Allah Subhanahu is intensely aware of you. So Muraqaba means, we you call in Arabic, bab al-mufa'ala, janabayn, tarafayn. We want to make it two-way. Allah Ta'ala, you said in the Quran, fa'ini kareem, that you are close to me, I want to be close to you. Allah Ta'ala, you said in Quran, Nahnu aqrabu ilay min hadad wulib, that you're closer to us than our own self. I want to feel that you are closer to me than my own self. I want it to be two way. You said in Quran that you are rakib, you are intensely aware and conscious of me. I want to be intensely aware and conscious of you. This is called muraqamat. In order to do this, Allah Ta'ala has explained in Quran, number one. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ and make the zikr of your Rabb inside yourself. Talabra'an with humility. Khifatan silently. Okay, so we're going to remember Allah Ta'ala inside ourselves, humbly and silently. What are we going to think in that remembrance? Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, Fadkuruni al kurkum. Remember me and I will remember you. So we're going to think that I'm sitting here remembering Allah, and Allah has promised in Quran that if I remember Him, He is going to remember me. How does he remember me? I told you, Yahdi Kalbu, who is going to send some hidayah on my heart. So I'm going to sit here and feel that I'm getting that hidayah on my heart from Allah. How am I going to remember him? That also Allah is explaining in Quran. Wal kul isma rabbik. And make zikr of the name of your Rabb. What is the name of our Rabb? Allah. So I'm going to make me that my tal, tal the spiritual heart, not the physical heart that pumps blood. I'm pointing here because just like your whole root is inside your whole body, the heart of the root is inside the heart of the body. That's where the tal is. It's part of your root. It's inside your body. So I'm going to make intention, just intention, that my tal, my spiritual heart, is saying Allah, 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 and I'm listening to. Him. That's it. Anybody who wants to do these five things and wants to be tutored in them, then you contact us and that Tarq Sahib and Imam Sahib perhaps can facilitate you on how to reach us. Alright? So inshallah we're going to practice that zikr for two, three minutes. Well, I guess however many depends where that one comes.
So, now.